Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Interconnect 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas for IBM Interconnect 2016. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. This is our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, talk to the smartest people we can find, extract the data, share that with you. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Prashant Bouyan, who is the co-founder of Alpha Modus. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much for having me. Good to see you. Try to extract the data out of your head and share with the audience in real time, do some machine learning. I would hope you would extract <laughs> the knowledge. Yeah, exactly. yeah that's right. Um, <laughs> you guys were on stage this morning, uh, very impressive um, demos, obviously showing the benefits and, and the value, by the way, of the data, using data in a new way in real time, providing real value. Um, so talk about the story real quick for the folks tuning in. Alpha Modus, why are you here on stage and what were you talking about? Sure, we created Alpha Modus in 2014 as an investment technology company. Our goal ultimately is to reprice investment advice, but um, we start, the way we do this is by looking for predictive patterns in market behavior that's buried in unstructured data and natural language. Um, we discovered Bluemix organically, uh, you know, after the Alchemy acquisition, um, and uh, we saw you know, I mean, five years ago, I saw Watson on t uh, television beat the Jeopardy champions like everyone else. And I thought immediately, how do we get one of these? Uh, so, uh, Take two. <laughs> right, but it's like, it's not like they put a price tag on, on, on a Watson, you can go get it from, uh, you know, Amazon or whatever. So, so basically, um, so, so basically um, uh, when, when we discovered the Bluemix APIs, right, suddenly, you know, we could start to incorporate Tweet Insights, Alchemy, natural language processing is a new dimension into our model making and improve the predictive accuracy of our, uh, of our old uh, uh, models, in particular an imbalance product that we used to predict market direction into the close of trading it was about 10% predictive. After um, adding this NLP element to it, we were able to improve our predictive accuracy by a factor of five. So you're, you're, so. So 50-50 50, 50, 50 basically. Uh, yeah, of 550%. Of <laughs> of, uh, right, and so, which is basically, it, it, ever since the Earth grew a nervous system in the internet, um, you know, the cognitive biases of investors compound into these collective manias, and, and um, you know, ultimately, our brains aren't growing fast enough to absorb, to, to make sense of all the complexity, so a lot of the traditional investment methodologies, which are based, A, on theory, rooted in... Diversify. Valuation, diversification, assumptions about normality, independence, and rationality of investors, kind of out the window when you have news and information spread around the globe instantaneously, right? And, um, you know, suddenly human psychology plays a much larger factor yeah. than ever before. It amplifies, right, these markets. So now, so. now you can measure everything, so let's just take this nervous system you mentioned, which call it Twitter. <laughs> right. the, the CB radio for the world, if you will, all chattering away. That's data. So financial markets have always had some sort of thesis and, uh, you know, norms around patterns. You know, the deer, the herd, deer in the headlights, investor to, you know, the herd's moving against that. And so with news cycle, if I get what you're saying uh, is happening is, you're saying, okay, we can use things like news as event traps and look at the impact to psychology at a, such a real-time level and accuracy. Well, is that the, kind the, of it's not quite real-time yet. Cognitive, uh, real-time cognitive analytics is where, where, where we want to go, certainly. Um, but but it's, it's still, you really don't have to be the guy who wins the race, you just have to be faster than the guy who you're racing against you know, in the world of asset management. Um, and so the idea is that buried in natural language, whether it's the tones of our voice, voices, or, um, you know, the, the sentiment in our tweets, weather patterns, you know, I mean, what affects markets that typically, you know, traditional investment methodologies don't encapsulate? So, what's, so, so yeah. we, need to, we need to set the table here a little bit, because we're, I think, for a lot of our audience, I mean, does everybody know what alpha is, right? So, alpha's beating the, some index, right, some average, right? Right, right. I mean, it's it's beating the market it, on a on a risk adjusted basis. Okay, so, and every, they're, they're like the website, Seeking Alpha, everybody's seeking, seeking Alpha. And your objective is to totally ch transform that business. So today, 
if a financial advisor charges a percent of the assets in the portfolio, you're well, trying our, to... Our, our philosophy is that no one should pay a professional throw a dart to the board, right? It's like, if you're paying 1%, uh, you know, the only person who's really compounding returns is the advisor, right? If, if they're going to be compounding returns, you should be compounding returns at a higher rate than what you're paying, right? It's not really anything else, but at, m many asset managers are having difficulty keeping up with the complexity of markets because of all this data, right? So, but, but, but the business models haven't changed around that around this kind of revolution in data that... that so will you provide, are you a technology provider or are you a service provider or we're, both? We're a technology provider. So okay, what we so do you... is we, uh, we analyze unstructured data to find predictive patterns in markets. We take those insights and then what we do is we package them up into uh, high performance algorithmic trading systems that we then distribute to asset managers or our clients, who are our clients uh, typically, and other market participants via the cloud. Okay. And then they can choose to still charge one or two percent, or they could exactly because they've got the regulatory framework and everything like that. But they can still charge what they, but now they can justify their fees. Right, and somebody's going to come along and say, "Hey, I can do robo investing and dramatically lower, you know, so, your so, cost and my so cost." One key distinction is robo investing typically refers to like passive investment management, just kind of uh, mimic the index for free. Um, but we're really focused more on active management, where we're saying, all right, well, let's beat the market on a risk-adjusted basis. Are you, yeah, okay, are, you like a, are you just like a fancy way of saying a recommendation engine for the clients? Um, are you actually doing trades on their behalf? Are they taking oh, no, no, the service? Well, well, the recommendation, um, so we, we, we are not, um, we're, we're currently in the process of building out different types of wrappers to distribute these insights, but what we do is we create trading strategies, which are, which are distributed as algorithms as part of high performance algorithmic trading systems that we kind of lease infrastructure as a service kind of thing mm -hmm. along, you know, so along with the strategies. So an asset manager, say you're a hedge fund or something, and, you're, and you um, uh, are having difficulty beating the market on a risk adjusted basis, you can actually subscribe to our uh, you know, uh, solutions and, and kind of run them almost like white label strategies. So what about venture investing? I'd love to corner the market on the early stage unicorns, you know, one and two and 10, funds the entire venture fund as an asset class, we call it that. Do you guys go into anything with that, or is that too gray in, in, area? In terms of trying to predict... Uh, yeah, using data approaches there, or is it just too gray? Not, uh, that's not really our uh, primary uh, area of expertise. But uh, we, 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 I definitely think that there's a lot of opportunity in you know, applying these types of analytics across venture, private equity, you know, traditional banking, I mean, across the board, but that's what we're really focused on our niche, which is active investment. All right, so you guys doing some cool stuff. So dig under the hood, share some color uh, around some of the tech involved, and then the impact to the people watching, uh, whether you're your customer or someone else in another industry saying, you know, my gut's telling me I, be, I need a data-driven approach. I hear the buzzword, be data-driven. It's good for your business. Okay kind of cliche, but the reality is, it is. So talk about an example of some of the tech and how that would translate and impact uh, a business. Well, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing here is that we really were just created on, on the cloud, so there's no like trying to embrace cloud or anything like that. Um, and the, the reason is because cloud has kind of, you know, we're attracted to cloud, A, for the cognitive, but B, because, you know, we're running high performance algorithmic trading systems. Um, the technology behind the insight discovery process really, you know, in the natural language space, we're pretty much, um, you, you know, using a bunch of these, these um, uh, Bluemix APIs, the Watson Partnership APIs like uh, um, Alchemy, um, Tweet Insights, Tone Analysis. These types, of, you know, there's almost like no tech involved. It takes us a day or two to build out really powerful insights, prototype these solutions incredibly cheap and fast, and then put them into our um, uh, trading systems, uh, you know, which we already have an infrastructure for that, right? And then deploy them right on the cloud uh, through IBM. So you basically you basically buy in with Bluemix through the APIs, Bluemix all is, the IBM IP, right? Just plug right in, That's extract it. out some rule heuristic, right? And then from that, you use your backend. Correct. Yeah, our our infrastructure that we and then we just create instances of that. And you know, the key thing here is that. You know, the key unexpected consequence of this whole thing is that Bluemix and Watson, you know, these types of technologies, they actually, you know, when I saw Watson be Jeopardy champions five years ago, 
I was sure that technologies like that would replace human intelligence in short order. But actually, what's really happening here is that um, they actually are unleashing our creativity and extending our intelligence. Like, I mean, we're able to, to build and prototype ideas. Like, record, like, if I have an idea, we can have a prototype built in a few days. We're talking to Bob Egan, researcher who was on earlier, and he brought this out, where opportunities for creativity are highlighted on, in an entrepreneurial way, where, and also risk to companies that don't evolve, is when you look at gap analysis between what you're good at, it's easy for someone to identify where you might have a gap. Right. I'm, an, I'm an entrepreneur, I say, hey, there's a gap in that big whale over there, right. incumbent industry leader, and my crumbs, his crumbs is a billion dollar opportunity. Right. I can move on that. Right. That's kind of the thing that we're seeing. Do you see that same dynamic? Yeah, I mean, if I'm understanding your question correctly, I think I am I'm seeing the, the, the same dynamic in the sense that it's really about the use case, right? It's about applying domain or something to, to, to the technology to commercialize a product that's, that adds value to the customer. So help us understand how natural language processing fits in. Are you presenting a reduced set of choices for an individual? Um, are, are you well, increasing the probability of so, so, success? So basically what, what it is that we, um, all right, we'll see, we'll start with Bluemix and prototype an idea on a small data set, right? So we'll have a small corpus uh, of news related to whatever topic, for example, which is really harder than actually building the sentiment parser. Let's say we build a sentiment parser, the insight makes sense on a small sample, scale out the corpus, right, and then apply it to, to through, run, run it through the sentiment parser, and we might get back, for instance, positive and negative sentiment values that we then turn into like, then we weight, by re, weight, weight those values by relevance, you know, and um, we'll incorporate those into our, into our models, like maybe those models have imbalances as another factor, for example, right, and what we'll then do is, you know, you know do data science and try to figure out right, how predictive is this thing, is there a significant relationship here, you know, maybe we want to, you know, reduce the risk of collinearity, so we, apply, you know, I mean, di different types of statistical methods to try to uh, figure out how to uh, turn this insight into something that's stable. Uh, and once we have something predictive, then we just plug it into our infrastructure where we have execution algorithms, um, you know, routes or smart order routing, you know, low latency, co-located infrastructure, and now we can just we have a strategy that will start running in a matter of a week. So brag a little bit. Give us some examples of some of the real successes that you guys have, have seen. All right, well, so um, there's a, uh, um, a demo that I'm doing in my breakout on, on Wednesday, um, and uh, it, it applies um, um, some sentiment uh, uh, analytics from Alchemy, and it's plugged right into one of our imbalance models. And, um, you know, it's, it's a stable, it's a stable uh, predictive pattern. It's a $60,000 account, it's an 85 second trade. And it, you know, um, in the demo it makes a, a real cash, $1,062 uh, on that $60,000 uh, capital, which is you know, a 1.77% return. And the reason is because on that particular day, um, you know, there was sentiment, uh, weak, uh, weakness or uncertainty in US, uh, in Europe, central bank policy, weakness in oil. Oil was down about 8% recently. But there, the interesting sentiment was the, the strongest weighted sentiment scores that we had were in gold, flight to safety to gold. And these happen to coincide with strong buy imbalances in gold, weak imbalances in energy and equities on that particular day, and we're able to book a really good return. You know, it's interesting how much, you know, Dave and I talk about this all the time, and we geek out about some of the tools we built around data science, and look at the history of the web and the interactive world since the web started. It's really the, the it's, it's, we're back to contextual and behavioral data. Right. You're essentially, writing code and using Bluemix and saying, hey, here's the context. We trade uh, banking policy in Central Europe. The behavioral is going to be the pattern you can predict right. and the prescription is the trade. Right. You're saying, okay, you're doing that just faster and uniquely. Well, well, I mean, the key is how much of a particular phenomenon can you explain, right? And like, like how, pretty, you know, that, that's really what we're, what we're after, right? If I could explain, and by the way, human behavior is, almost impossible to explain, you can ask any psychologist, right? So it's like, but you don't need to explain all of human behavior in order to make a lot, you know, to make decent returns. Um, you, you know if the NFC team wins the playoffs, Super Bowl, right. the stock market goes up. How, right. does, how do you explain that? <laughs> right, it's gotta be The somewhere. Giants are in New York and right. that's an NFC team. People are happy. I mean, I mean, I don't know, I'm guessing, but it is a guess. Well, I mean, you know, it's like, 
you know, sentiment could be affected by weather, I mean, who knows, right? But it's all about looking for these deeper connections in the data. And, you know, it's like the famous quotations, right? It's like two and a half quintillion bytes of data created every day, 90% of the last couple of years. Most of this data is unstructured, right? So, like, we're not even tapping into, we're just at the surface of really what all of this stuff means, right? This and is, applying it in real time is really the future, I think. So this is not your first rodeo entrepreneurially. You've done a few ventures in, in the past. Well, it, it is actually kind of all the same trajectory, but it's, it's, an, evol it's an evolution it's is what it is. That same itch as they say yeah. entrepreneurial. So what are you doing differently? Let's talk about the entrepreneurial journey. Um, it, always, it always is the case where you scratch that itch and you know, just kind of stay on that same track. But now, as a startup, entrepreneurially, there's new tools available. So you're cloud native, you mentioned that. What are the things that you're doing now that weren't available from a, fun, a funding company? Well, what we're really doing is we're, we're leveraging infrastructure that was built over the last decade, right? But that infrastructure itself is really just a delivery mechanism for our trading insights or algorithms, you know? Um, what's different now is that, you know, we have this focus on this, the, you know, below the, you know, below the uh, tip of the iceberg uh, you know, data, you know, and it's like, wait a second, instead of, you know, instead of just looking at how the prices of this asset relates to the prices, prices of that asset, you know, and trying to find a relationship, let's also add in the dimension of, you know, some, you know, something in unstructured data, natural language, like one thing we're doing right now is, um, you know, we're prototyping a, like tone analysis, so we can kind of, um, you know, like, like kind of parse sen uh, sentiment from, Company, public company uh, executive earnings calls and to see like how, it's not just like the news they deliver, but how they deliver it kind of thing, yeah, and yeah. see how that can affect our, you know, our, uh, you know, market prices. We're very pleased with the quarter. Yeah, right, <laughs> crash, right. How stupid <laughs> like, are they? Yeah, right, so, so, thi mean, so things like that affect investor behavior, right, but right. they're not necessarily captured in the price. It's At least nuanced. not right away. I mean, yeah, you're basically nuanced, picking up nuanced signaling I mean, essentially, it's taking signal theory. The, the price will factor it in, but there's like a lag time, right? It yeah, takes yeah, time yeah. for that. And that, and that trade value is a, just a blocking and tackling you chip away in volume. Right. If you're knocking down on 60K, $1,000. Right. Well, it, it's more about, it's more about, it's not so much about the absolute dollar amount or the return. It's just the idea that, you know, this is a, a predictive pattern that, you know, that, that works. It, it's, it's about monetizing insight that we were able to extract using Watson Alchemy, right? Okay, so talk about, uh, so this is always hotly contested since, it's, since we're geeking out on it, we'll, we'll go there. Predictive versus prescriptive analytics. Obviously a lot of people get confused by the two, predictive and prescriptive, and you're seeing it in ad tech, now you're seeing it in all verticals. Any, any mobile app pretty much has some data layer in it with some aspect of analytics. Sure. Uh, what's so, the difference between the two prescriptive? Well, I mean, if I understand you correctly in terms of prescriptive analytics, suggestions, right? I look at data and I suggest, um, I, you know, I was at Partner World last week and I heard, I think, Steve Gold talk on stage about uh, Fitbit and the idea is that, you know, well, with Under Armour, I think they're trying to now, like, it's not just, all right, well, you know that you have 10,000 steps, but now what do you do about it, right? It tells you kind of what to do. So to that end, we're actually building out a recommendation engine that, that will actually allow port portfolio managers to upload their, their returns and take, you know, from our universe of different strategies, some kind of um, uh, recommendation back saying, all right, well, if you, if you incorporate uh, X amount of this strategy and X amount of that strategy, this is how your portfolio could evolve over time. You know, you know so, so we're kind of getting into that. From a predictive point of view, it's really just about finding those insights uh, for Sean, I really stable. appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Um, share with the folks out there that are watching, what's the vibe of the show here? What's your take on the show uh, for the folks that aren't here watching live? It's a great show. I mean, it's a lot of fun to talk to you guys and you, uh, you, know, you take a real data-driven perspective on things. Awesome. Well, we have a recommendation for you here in the recommendation engine on theCUBE. <laughs> Check out our CubeCast on siliconangle.tv. A lot of insight in there and potential prescriptions. We'll figure out how to create that um, in the future. Prashant, great to have entrepreneur, data science, doing some cutting edge, creating value, not just arbitraging, but value. Congratulations, Alpha Modus here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more extraction of the data in real time right here on theCUBE Live. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>